lessons. Today's lesson, we are going to go over the art of debris. So, like, you know, if we go and we look at your concept work here, actually, I should have it open because I was smart. I guess I wasn't that smart. Oh, okay, here we go. When we look at your room, it's it's really like nice and tidy and what is defined is the objects in your asset control list. Your ACL is solid. So what we have to do is we have to kind of like make it lived in now. I think that's the next part of this. And uh, we're gonna discuss debris and then we're gonna come back and figure out how we can make this a little bit more lived in. So what, what I wanna talk to you about in terms of debris, why construction on objects doing things the way that they're built is so important so when when we're when we're artists one of the one of the faults that i believe instructors taught uh is that you only model what you see you only model what the camera sees and to a degree i think that's true the problem that i have with that is the planning for reusability isn't there when you only model what you see. Sure, you can get it done pretty fast. So like this, uh, let's go Let's go over here to this here. Um, let's do like um, rundown city. This is a good example. Like when we're when we're painting something like this, you know, we're we're trying to grab a series of informations. So like when you're young and you try to copy it, you don't understand what you're copying. You're kind of copying for the sake of copying. For example, like the importance of communication and power and electricity with these power cables and how they go and they get strung back and forth. The eye and the mind, when you're looking at areas, they don't communicate every detail. What it does is it kind of your, your brain has this thing where it just observes things in regards to safety first subconsciously and then it computes a path to the easiest way to get through something. So the path of less, least resistance. And it's also looking for familiarity. So your, because your brain is so wired for fight, flight, or make friends, you want to avoid sketchy areas. So the brain kind of just assimilates shapes. And so what it says is, this is a truck, this is a truck, this is a car, this is a car, this is a commercial vehicle. But what it's not telling you is this is a Ford, this is a Chevy, this is an Audi, this is a, a Volvo. It's not telling you those those macro details. It's not telling you how old this tr this shrub is. It's not telling you how old this building is. It's it knows there's a building here, and your brain says not safe. And whether or not it is safe that's what your brain is kind of it, it puts off that frequency it's the same kind of thing with these pallets like your brain puts off what's behind it who's behind it why am i here when you see these potholes and what it what it kind of is doing is it's telling you subconsciously that there's no love in this environment because if there was the road would be taken care of you wouldn't have all these potholes everywhere you wouldn't have the building splintered you wouldn't have the power lines being draped back and forth like this because this is like a safety hazard. You know, you have crooked telephone poles. So, and then, then there's this building that's structurally 90 degrees. You have all these geometric shapes on this building. 
So the contrast between this building and this building, your brain says, go there, don't stay here. Because there's too much unknown here. The familiarity of perfection, your brain is kind of pulling you towards that area. Does this make sense? I think so. But what's, um, um, when you mean like how that is like, a, I'm just going to say, if, if this is like an unsafe zone, do you mean like by, like, you don't know what's around, like all these these objects in the construction zone? Right. Yes, you're, you, there's too much unknown. Like, you don't know what's going on. Like, because it, it, cause, like, when you're walking around on a day, day to day basis, you don't see pallets stacked like this. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like, okay, well, when, if I'm going to walk, uh, I'm going to probably just try to walk down the middle. If I get walked too close to this truck, I don't know if somebody's going to jump out of the truck. If I walk too close to these crates, these pallets, I don't know if somebody's going to jump out of these things or try to push them over on me. So, like, your brain thinks about all these things without telling you that it's doing that. It's assessing the, it's assessing the, sta the safety of the environment. So same kind of thing over here. Let's go find another rundown area. So this is another rundown area. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I had my mic like pointed out of the way. Just That's to let okay. you talk and stuff. Oh, sure, sure. That's okay. So this is another interesting set of uh, structures here. Um, part of building a lived-in area is structural understanding of how things are made. Uh, for example, how come in these areas right here we have yellow paint, but it's but somehow there's white chunks exposed? So there's a couple questions. It's like first of all. Why is it white underneath? Secondly, how did it get white? So, like, the debris itself is telling a story of why it's why it looks like the way that it does. Like, why is this graffiti here? Is it here because some, some kids were bored? Or is it here because a gang lives here and they're marking their territory? And... You know, when it, I don't know if you know anything about gang culture, um, but if, if a gang tags their area and another gang puts a, a slash through it, sometimes they'll put in another name underneath it, and usually it's a location, and so this way it's, it's a dispute between territories. So, like, like right here, for example, there's a, there's a dagger here, and then there's another graffiti on this. This is probably... Like case in point, it says 2 a.m. And it's telling you there something's going down at 2 o'clock because these two gangs are arguing over this territory. Like I wasn't even really thinking about that in the beginning, but now that I'm paying a little bit closer attention, this is this is like a legitimate gang issue. So like what like is that and could that be contributing to the safety of this area? And did your brain pick that up or is it subconscious? that I shouldn't be here, right? Like if you had a choice between being in this location or being at that building, you probably would, would like beeline it over to there because for whatever reason in a person's mind, when something looks clean and organized and pristine, it has a tendency to deal with safety. So the, these are kinds of things that we should be paying attention to as artists when we are building a community. like. You know, this tire, is this serving a purpose? Do people train on this tire? Or is it just there because people are lazy and they don't want to throw it away? Right? So it feels random, but usually randomness has some type of organization to it. Am I making sense so far? Yeah. Actually, I was wondering, though. Because um, I understand everything you're talking about. Do you ever feel like... Um, there's a moment where you might overanalyze it maybe or is that just not that's not true uh no that is uh that's one of those things where it's important to work with an art director when you're dealing with things that you're working on as a whole and the reason why is because it comes back to that statement that art is never done so like if we type in over here like environment concept art 
okay? Usually what we end up with is two types of concepts. We, we deal with an abstract, which is shapes and forms like this. Perfect point. Open image in new tab. Okay. So like there's a lot of shapes and forms here. And this is kind of like in a way, in a lot of ways, how our brain processes data on a, on a normal everyday basis. Like your brain is processing, oh, mountain, oh, shrub, oh, grass, oh, tree. But it's, it's not processing this exact type of bush. It's not processing which location in the United States or Europe or what country is this in. What trees grow in that location? Which foliage is indigenous to that location and ecosystem? If those trees are in a part of that ecosystem, then what animals live in that ecosystem, right? So if you're gonna have, part of the problem that I have with this image, believe it or not, is that though imposing for giants this large to roam about, in a land like this, you are not communicating to me how this thing sustains life. So if this thing is this huge, the qu quantities of consumption of food that this thing would have to, to deal with on a daily basis would be astronomical. And there would be very little to satisfy a being of this size. I think, I actually, go ahead. I was actually, oh, sorry. I was, didn't mean to interrupt you. I was actually thinking the same thing and I was wondering, well, maybe it's like, a, maybe the, those giants are meant to be invasive. It's possible. They're, they're, mm. Yeah, it, it's, it's possible. But you know, part of, part of that invasiveness is like communicating the possibility of where they came from. So like, for example, the shapes and forms that I see is that these beings over here in the background are actually going and walking the other direction. I don't feel them on approach. But if they would have had other beings with maybe just a couple eyes, you know, skirting the landscape, even if it was even more blended in with the background and just pushed them back even more, that would really insinuate an invasiveness because they're approaching the camera. And so you have all of this wonderful greenery but back here on the horizon even if you put smoke and fire in the background you're 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 communicating the point that these things just got here but it, but i feel like because of the life that it's emitting that these guys live here that's that's kind of how it's communicated to me but but kind of going back to the shape and form thing this is where abstract artists i feel like do a good job in communicating a idea but it doesn't communicate how to get the job done. Because let's talk about this, for example. This concept is a bit more deliberate. You can actually like almost make out what kind of trees these are. You can almost make out the kind of shrubs they are. What is this? Is this root? Is it a stone? Is it a rock? Is it a... Uh, a tree that had fallen over like this is one of those things again where where concept artists are failing to communicate to the team what is this maybe he has another a, another document later on that he explains what what type of things that he's referencing but really really great concept artists like Thomas Kincaid for example he does a really good job defining uh, or even Bob Ross, like they do a good job defining what kind of trees they're referencing. And it makes sense that those trees grow in those environments. Um, you know, another, another really good example here. Like you can kind of get the feeling that this was some kind of church or something, some kind of, or even Elven building. And what gives that off is the, the peaks on these windows. Um, plus, there's a type of glory that is associated with this, you know, even this intricate framework here. Like, I kind of feel like Paris or, you know, something foo foo. You know, and these like leaves. The Say again? Oh, that looks like a man in the background to your left. Oh, 
the way to the left. Here? Yeah. I thought that was a guy. Ah. Uh -huh. But looking at it again, it's not. You know, the, the type of flowers that are being chosen here, I bet you could talk to them and they probably know exactly what flower that they chose. Even the leaves that are here, there's enough love and detail in these leaves that they were obviously referencing something. And then now they went back to shape and form again and they didn't care what this object was. Um, what we would have to ask, is this, a, is this vine growing on some type of archway that was incomplete? Uh, like, what is this structure? Is this part of this window? I don't think so. It feels like it's been pushed off in the background even further. But, but it's very obvious that the, the, the majority of the tone that's being felt here because of the color selection and the color grading, that this is an area of discovery and it really gives off a uh, kind of sanctuary. Like, do you remember when you were a kid and you were playing tag and then like, you were like, bass? Remember that feeling? Mm -hmm. That's kind of like what this is. Like you just got done trekking through this crazy place and now all of a sudden this is base. Like you have this feeling that you can you can relax a little bit and just kind of enjoy the moment. So let's go let's go talk about something more post apocalyptic. Uh post apocalyptic. What does that mean? Uh so the apocalypse an apocalypse is a cataclysmic event that happens globally, okay? Um, it's usually not restricted to one location, but post-apocalyptic means what happens after the fact, after the apocalypse has ended, how do people survive and how do they restructure society? And sometimes the answer is they don't. Okay. So, you know, post-apocalyptic here. Oh, here's another really good example. I mean, to me, this is clear that this is a, a movie concept, and this looks like Willem Dafoe. Uh, but it's a it's a very high concept piece to me. Uh, they're they're photoshopping a lot of information together to kind of portray that this is being run down. And what what is that run down ingredient? And it's typically overgrowth. When you have building structures it's uncommon especially for a bus to have vines growing out of it because that's not what happens but nature always finds a way and nature is is always going to take over whatever man-made structure is there that's why we have to hire lawn crews to service our our lawns or etc because it will overgrow if we don't maintain it you know this guy has got clear he's got a lot of trash over here but this person is obviously living over here. Trash to me kind of doesn't make sense a lot of times because trash implies consumption, right? In a post-apocalyptic post area, there's two things about consumption. Usually it's extremely rare for people to consume. And if there's trash, it's probably because they're trying to scrounge and salvage. But because the waste management isn't doing its job anymore, people are typically responsible for burning their own Garbage. That's the way it is in Trinidad uh, in a lot of areas. So I, I kind of take issue with a lot of these little towns with tents and trash everywhere because most of the time people don't want that stuff, even, even though it's run down, even though it's filthy. Like most people understand that hoarding trash like this breeds bacteria, disease, and infection. So that cesspool, people are gonna gonna do whatever they can. If they, if they don't have soap, they're gonna do what they can to burn it out because everybody has access to fire. They don't always have access to soap. So, um, but but in general, also what helps is exposing the inner workings of the object. So this bridge, for example, you have all of this steel that's been broken off. And what's also interesting is it doesn't show where that piece went. It kind of shows that there's been some kind of collapse on the other side because it feels like it's a drop off because of how high the cityscape or how high the, this, this uh, yeah, cityscape is. You can see the roofs. Maybe it's possible that this bridge broke off the chunk of that earth and it just fell. 
So there's definitely a story that's being told over here. Like it just looks like you won't be able to get to that end. And going back to my video example here, you know, we started out discussing why you should build things out entirely in its completeness. So I'm going to rewind this just a little bit and let you kind of observe the room. Oh yeah. Thanks for all mute this guy. Look at that. This, this, this is, this is how, you know, a, a, a group of, of, of studio members really know what they're doing on how they build stuff. This drawer is built properly because it's like barely holding it together. And they took the time. Let's rewind that. They took the time to like put the drawers in there and then they recycled the furniture to make it look like it was all screwed up. Okay, another really good example of building stuff out correctly. Like, I've met a lot of uh, artists back in the day and art directors and stuff will say, okay, if you're gonna build a chair like this, don't build the underside of the, of the chair, especially underneath all of this framing that's happening underneath where, the, where all the books you know, kind of rest. Delete any polygons that are underneath it. These little polygons that are underneath the, uh, the leg of this chair, delete them out. But when you look at this top of this desk over here, there's, they're turned over, they're stacked. So you actually see the underside of that stuff. It's very important that we maintain that kind of forward thinking. Okay, let's uh, skip ahead a little bit. Okay, so back in the gym. Okay, so in this particular room, uh, I know this is a boss fight, so try not to let it distract you too much. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of crap that's just in the room. And that, those, uh, that crap that feels randomly placed there, part of the reason why that happens is because the level design team is trying to provide cover for the player. They, mm -hmm. they want to be able to run and hide behind things. They want to be able to run and um, position themselves so that if they're being attacked from across the room, they want to be able to, to get down you know, keep their head down. So like, that's a really important factor when you're designing objects is asking the question later, even though, even though I have my room, is there anything in this room that can be recycled down the road in some other area, some other part of the video game or some part of the movie that this can be stacked up, bundled together and be made for cover? So this way you're, you're really, really trying to apply such forward thinking that there's no doubt that you can run and hide. And, and what, what happens if they do get invaded? Your little colony gets invaded. How do, does your person have an escape plan and get out and hide? And like maybe even though that's not part of the room, the community didn't build it out for her. What if she's already thinking that way and she tried to chisel out her own escape route? whether it's in the floor or behind the, the television area. Um, maybe she doesn't know it, but maybe it was built out by a different community member or a couple people before her that she didn't even know that that was part of in her room. So it's a discovery, right? But that's, that's part of the fun of creating uh, an environment is a secret uh, passages. The escape route I had in mind, it was actually more for like, um, um, more like emergencies based off of um, catastrophes, but not really like intentional, like home, uh, like home invasions. But that's a really good idea, though. Yeah, um, you know when they're when they're building out a uh, capital building, or you know places of government, there's always an escape plan, and they have to think of that stuff at the architectural phase. You know same kind of thing when you're building a colony out you always want to be able to give people the option to get out if they have to because safety first and foremost usually usually if somebody's going in with the intention with a group of people to build a community 
there's usually one person that's like thinking that through. Maybe they don't tell the other people, but they but they build it in anyways. You know, whether or not like somebody's corrupt, they got a way into their house. Somebody's, you know, being in, being broken out, there's a way out of the house. So it's just something to think about, you know. Mm-hmm. So let's let's take a look at this stuff some more. The Last of Us. I've played the first one. I've not played the second one. I have. A, I take issue a lot with the writer who wrote this. Um, I, I feel. I feel like honestly, he's a, an old man experimenting with children's sexuality. I have an issue with that. I'm, honestly, it's it's really difficult for me to ignore that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so uh, pinboard, a lot of stuff that's over here. So our brain's registering, okay, it sees the clutter, but if you walk over that bench, uh, it's a workbench. So you end up working on the bench and working with your stuff. You're not actually looking at the clutter, but really good artists will actually have logic and reason for why this exists. They're gonna build a story for this person who used to own this house. Maybe he's got pictures of his families, maybe they're to-do lists, maybe they're work orders, um, that kind of thing. And then why are, why is this stuff over here? So the, this that stuff also tells a story too. See how the camera just hid the hid the hid the board. That that tool chest. Excuse me. That tool chest has been used three times in this. In this building, but your brain doesn't register that it's been there three times. Honestly, I think if I was going to have it three times, I, I probably would adjust the drawers or turn one on its side or turn one 180 degrees, like, you know, just try to figure out a different way to to utilize it. Barrels and crates are typically m- most common items. Uh, in video games, it's interesting to see them shrink wrapped as well. Honestly, that kind of kind of thing is a bad um, game design uh, uh, cho- choice to me, because if I was walking around and I saw shrink wrapped stuff, I'd f- I'd figure out how to take my crowbar and get into it because that means there's probably a lot of supplies in that stuff. Let's see what else he's got in here. Uh, so, so, oh, now let, like let's let's assess. Going back to that, you asked the question earlier. How do you know if you're overanalyzing something? Like, was that was my comment overanalytical? Like, I understand these guys are like, okay, we just need some debris. Just put some damn shrink wrap on it. That's probably how the conversation started and ended. You know, um, mm-hmm. but and that's why I said art is never done, because what if what if that's like a treasure chest to me? You know, what would you like put in replacement for like just um, something that's not meant to look as eye catching as that shrink wrap? Like just a table, maybe? Um, honestly, I, you could still use the crates, just open them up and bust a couple of them or something. Mm-hmm. So so this way, like maybe the de- maybe the debris has been spilled out. It can still function as a as a as a bullet bullet uh, hose, um, no bullet um, bullet shield, you know. But uh, you can open it up and maybe you look down, and it's empty, or maybe you look down and there's like, uh, maybe it's solid on the inside. I don't know. Like, but that's maybe there's a barrel inside it because crate and then you put a barrel inside and and maybe the people were trying to use it as a as a bullet shield. Just some things to consider. Uh, but yes, maybe a completely different object. But there is room for this, especially in a warehouse, right? Top shelf stuff. You got to get a forklift and pull it down. Maybe I'm making things more complicated again, but, you know, just kind of how my brain works with that. This is real nice. So the, the art of debris over here again. 
they're using the shelf from downstairs and a whole bunch of other boxes and stuff, and they're cluttering up and tell the player, hey, you can't go that way. That's a good use of that stuff. Same. I was looking at the rails on the ladder. Ah. I like the dents on it. There's that reused board again, and your, 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 your brain doesn't even register that it was reused. It doesn't even do that. And I, I really wonder how many times this, sh this rack was used in the game, because this rack is like everywhere all the time. Same thing with those barrels. Okay, here's, here's some debris that's kind of overlooked. All of this weird stuff, it's con it feels like concept art. Because like from this distance, you don't know what that is. But somebody had to make that stuff. It's a combination of paper trash, Coke cans, beer cans, and it looks like wet boxes that were kind of torn away. I like the, the chair that's been dilapidated. So what's really nice is when you're reusing a lot of this stuff too, uh, you know, you can build more space for people to explore. There's that rack again, turn 90 degrees. Okay. Real nice use of debris. The boarded windows. Kind of telling people, hey, you can't go in here. And there's logic to why how those windows are boarded up. So real good use of that stuff there. Okay, let's move on to another example. So here's Gears of War. Gears of War is a little bit more extreme in terms of in terms of debris, um, just because this is like wartime debris. So having these sandbags being strewn about, very important. And then watching the poly count on that stuff too is important. So we got these like planks of wood that used to be something, maybe it used to be a shelf or, a, or something, but it would make sense as to why, you know, the length of these boards matches the length of this board. So that's why I'm wondering if it's some kind of drawer or something. Maybe it used to be a table. Um, part of debris is scuffed edges on things, worn edges. And we'll get into that uh, maybe in the next lesson. Uh, definitely the use of um, what's known as the uh, macro variation in roughness. So if you look at the ceiling up here, it, it kind of feels oily. That some areas are more reflective than others. If you watch up, watch as he goes up, and watch the camera, watch that that me metallic reflection up there, right? And and that that happens because of how the material is wired uh, or uh, created. Now I'll, I'll show about that stuff too. So I was trying to get a clear shot here. Okay, very clear on what's happening over here in terms of debris. So somebody had to actually take the trees that were in the game regularly and cut a bunch of them down and bully them out and make them feel like they were burned up. That this is this fire has been going on for some time now. So anytime you're dealing with post-apocalyptic stuff. There's probably going to be a burning area. It's it's kind of natural. It kind of almost feels like it's not post-apocalyptic unless something's burning. So what's really nice over here is they got a lot of fog in the background, a lot of smoke going up, and the smoke and fog is not the same, which is why I mentioned the both. Um, and of course, you know, random interests where your eyes are being drawn to because of the the brightness of the fire. 
and it's really hard to determine what the artists are really where where they're wanting you to go because you have all of this light that's being brought here against this real dark background and then against this real bright background so it's like okay am i supposed to go through all of this but i have to deal with the enemies that's why that's why they put put the uh the bullets coming from that direction which i thought was a good idea like you have all this bright light saying hey look there's going to be enemies coming from over here so that's a manipulation thing Sorry, I know this game's like really violent, but I, I'm, I'm trying to pull the uh, appreciation for the background work. Let's see if I can get towards the end. Honestly, I, I don't like this game. Like, it's, it's too violent for me in general. I, I don't play this. Um, yeah, so nice contrast over here. You have trees that haven't been touched by the fire. It's, it is as if the fire is moving towards this general direction, which I do think that this was planned out this way. You know, especially down here, there's not a lot of fire left over here. And then as it gets towards this area, the fire gets more frequent. Smart display. Use of You're fire. Mostly, can you so. use this game more like for an example then? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, if the Gears of War series does anything well, it's absolutely amazing when it comes to post-apocalyptic uh, uh, concepts. Okay, so this area over here, another description of debris on the ground. There was going to be more. Uh, I spent a lot of time this morning trying to actually look for that paper. So, what this is, uh, and I apologize for not being able to get a better shot, but if you walk around in the game, you'll notice that there are artists dedicated to, to debris decals. What that means is somebody's sitting behind a desk and all they're doing is trying to figure out what kind of crap can be thrown around the ground. And this 3D object is actually a plane that has textures of other sheets of paper and other things that were thrown about as if like a notebook exploded. And or if they are and maybe not a notebook, but maybe it's a propaganda stack of papers that were strewn about. So somebody had to actually make that debris. Now, if we if we come over here, we type in uh, Unreal Asset Store. We type in debris. Whoops. This is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Like, I wouldn't purchase this because he's using like the same four or five objects everywhere. Now, whether or not you want to sit down and make the time to create different brick types um, and then have the bricks been smashed, that's up to you right? and the tires and stuff. This is a really good use of time, believe it or not. Like this probably sells really well. I do appreciate this stuff down here on the floor, a mixture between leaves and pebbles and dust and oil and stuff like this stuff to me is probably the most important stuff out of everything. But someone took the time to actually make this rubble and it's, it, it is, it is very good work. Um, what's even smarter is if this person created blueprints that do different groupings of how the debris works. That's like, like this, for example. This is a group. So basically, because this blueprint would be already made, 
it's prefabricated. You can just drag and drop the blueprint on the ground. So this could be one type and this could be one type. And I, and, and I, and I like that. This is definitely one. So one, two, three, four, four different types of blueprints. And then of course he's given you those eight objects or 12 objects or 16 objects just to make whatever you want to out of it. That's why I was saying your brain doesn't really calculate what it is. All it's processing is groups of stuff. Am I making sense? Yeah. So, but when you, when you look at it broken down to those components, it's like, wait, I can do that. Right? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and go back. Hell, I think I could do that. <laughs> so here's, here's another really good example of, of uh, I don't know why he rendered it out like this. But these are decals of tileable pieces of information. Like, I think it's too square. Like, I, I, I kind of appreciate this stuff a little bit more because it feels a little bit more randomized than just have, have it going all the way out to the edges. But it's very possible this stuff tiles real well. But somebody Sorry, had to take I, the time to do this. Go ahead. Sorry, I don't know what that is. Oh, oh, uh, here. Tells. I, or I know what it or yeah, I just don't know what this is what I'm looking at. Yeah, it's probably blurry across the thing too. It's just really the oh, lighting's like, terrible. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're leaves. Here, I'll send you the link directly. I thought it looked like sand. <laughs> I'll try to remember to, for those of you watching this video too, I'll try to remember to put that in the description. It is. It it it, it is sand. Like there's sand down here in the bottom left hand corner and then th these are leaves and this is like leaves and Oh, they're Twigs. just really tiny. Yeah, it's it's just really bad lighting. Like it's a, it looks like it's very clear that it's a lot of work. Like somebody put some real time into this, and it's very obvious that this stuff tiles out. But what he's not doing is he's not making like Terminator tiles. Like in other words, like not not T one thousand Terminator, not not Arnold Schwarzenegger Terminator. But like when this when this debris terminates into something else, like he he should have this. He, Technically, it should be designed like this. Let me see if I can actually find what I'm looking for. Uh, when all else fails trying to find what you're looking for in terms of how to create something in 3D, try to look for the sprite work. So let's look at Zelda 3 sprites. Uh, I'm probably going to have to go to the actual... Thing itself. Okay, let's go to. Take it off. There we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, let's try to find this. So when you're designing sprites, you know, like on how to determine how you're building tiles, how you're, how you're building an area, like look at this tile set, right? So it's very obvious that the artist wanted to create this real nice pattern in here. And it's my guess that this piece right here or one of these pieces in here in general can be recycled and put in these empty areas. And this, pro this tile here could go here, and this tile here could go here, which is why they're not unique. The point is, is you have these terminator tile sets. These terminate into moving into a different tile set. So this 
adjacent tiling over here would probably line up with these guys at random over here or this kind of stuff over here. So all these tiles are always moving into a different tile. Does this make sense? Mm, I think so. I don't totally get it. Um, whale? You think you can repeat it again? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I'm just trying to think of a, of a different way and how I can say it. So let's go to the actual map. Um, okay, so this is uh, the forest set. Ah, that's mm -hmm. even better. So the way that this area was designed is you have you have an artist and the way that the artist is designing this area, they're not manually going in here and painting this stuff in to make it look like this. They're taking small tiles such as these, such as these, and these tiles are repeated patterns. And they're taking and they're taking it and actually stamping it out to make it feel like this. You with me so far on that statement? Yeah. Okay. Secondly, because they're taking these tiles and repeating them in such a way that he created, this artist created, or he she created, sorry. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. 22 patterns. Now, I understand that this chunk over here counts, but still, I, 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 because I've done enough sprite work, I know that you can, you can create chunks out of chunks, it's making little ones from big ones. That's why this tile here is actually the same all the way around. And then you can take this, take a chunk of, of, uh, of different dirt and just plop it right in the middle. So these these exterior ones are terminator tiles. Terminator in the sense that they're leaving this color and changing ecosystem to this over here. So it's got a it's got a transition. And all of this is is those same repeating tiles that's transitioning from dirt to this. And so you have to create these transition tiles. And I'm communicating that building stuff in 3D like this is the same concept. So he has these tiles that are very square-like, but it, he, it would have been better for him to create nine tiles. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Slap this bad boy right in the middle and create transition tiles in the corners. So this way, this thing can transition into something else. He doesn't need that other something else. He could have just like taken this in this corner and just painted out this area over here. And it's just now all of a sudden a Terminator piece. It transitions mm -hmm. from this piece to this one and this one to this one. And it goes to nothing over here in this quadrant. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I'm getting it now. Okay. So... I'm not knocking this guy's work because, again, obviously, it's a lot of work. And it, it was very, very clear that even this tile will blend in, for the most part, to this one. And I understand also that he's probably using a landscape um, brush to transition a lot of this stuff. But there's a difference between being a landscape artist and, like, leveling up your skill and being a higher-level landscape artist. That's really what I'm trying to, to, to probe in this conversation is, like, how do you come up to the next level? Let's see what this guy's doing. See, this guy, this guy's kind of doing a little it. bit more of what I'm saying. Go ahead. Oh, no, just imagine it's also a good time saver, too. Mm-hmm. So this one over here, you know, he put a lot, put a lot of work into this. And, and honestly, this is a good Terminator tile because it's, it's sparse. You know, if, if he would have like this one over here, you can't even tell that this is a, a that this is a, uh, a square. And this over here, you can, you cannot kind of tell that it's a square, but not really. And you can kind of tell this is a square, but not really. So like the less square like that you make these tiles, like I understand they're trying to maximize the, the, 
the 4096 or 2048 texture. Like I understand that that's the goal, but sometimes it's better just to kind of like cut off the corners and just leave what's in the middle without trying to make it look round. It's an art to do that. Okay, so let's try to move on to different types of debris. So like this guy's got a really nice debris material system. Let's see if you can actually like, uh... these are these are what's known as layered shaders. So like the idea is, is that you're, you're painting in landscape using his predetermined stuff. I, it would have been nice to have some examples let me see if you can if we have any ah no he's just selling the brushes he, he put so much work into this and probably got burned out it would have been really great to see how how it applies oh it's free too what see what i mean like this isn't square mm -hmm. But it's a really good decal, like really good work. This this is the kind of stuff that's gold for free. We are totally going to be dealing with this one later. So we're going to go ahead and send that over to you as well. Because when you get into Unreal and stuff, you're really going to want that stuff. Let's go see what these dirt scans look like. Very nice. This is really good stuff for buildings. I like it. Really good stuff for barrels, too. I don't think I would have uh, hollowed out the center, though, honestly. I think it would have been better if they would have just left it alone. Because then you could have used the stuff for other things, too. I mean, I suppose you can kind of mix and match. Like, put this kind of different stuff in the middle, maybe. It's good work, though. Here we go, paper. It's really Hi. huge textures too, go ahead. I oh, know I'm looking at the stores and there they there's a little typo on the word assassin. <laughs> it's more free mega scans. That's really good work. Oh, I wonder if um in general, so this is Quixel's stuff how much it, oh it looks like everything over here is free so you got the link over there i wonder if they're a non-for-profit or something non-profit i didn't realize how much stuff that they had for free oh look at that bathroom that is gross gosh Excellent debris pile. These decals are great. Okay. You got kind of get the, the gist of what I'm kind of communicating to you in terms of how to visualize debris. Crickets, nothing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, make sure you bookmark that page. This is great. It's a lot of work that went into this. I'm kind of getting excited, though. Makes me want to build my own crazy scene. Mm -hmm. 
So the tough part, though, is, is I don't know if these come with LODs. Um, I'd have to look at it to see. Man, they got a lot of stuff. It's actually uh, seems pretty reasonable. Anytime you're getting foliage for free, it's worth picking it up. So do you understand what uh, Quixel Mega Scans are? Do you know what that is? No. Okay, so Quixel is a company, okay? And what they do is they actually go through and they scan terrain. And once they scan it, what they're doing is they're literally... Uh, They're literally scanning an environment and built and actually like taking a 3D image of this and then building it back out. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's a really good example. I was hoping they would have like a. Um, a demo. Yeah, so they went through and like set up a bunch of camera work and took pictures of all of this stuff. And what's even more important is that the way that they took they, they took pictures of it, the pictures itself, because of the algorithm of how Megascans works, it converts the pictures into 3D objects because of how many angles you're taking these cameras, camera pictures. And it just it's artificial intelligence that maps the environment out. Not to mention, it does it without the shadows. So, like all the shadows that you see in this stuff, this is all actually after render. This is not as is. So, in other words, you can move the light around and the shadows will go with it. It's actually in incredibly intense with the way that they build the stuff out. And it's extremely high poly stuff for the most part, too. Most of the time, the stuff's so, so high poly, you have to rebuild it out. It's a really nice wall. And it's and honestly, it's pretty difficult to actually like build this stuff and texture this stuff this well. So this stuff is all working from photographic reference. Anyways, definitely something you should look at, and I don't tell everybody this either. So I know I'm getting this on video, but most of the time, because I guess my my non popularity at the moment, it'll it'll change later. But you know, people. People who are paying attention to what I have to say get better faster. That's all I gotta say. It's the hidden. It, your 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 channel is like a, the hidden gem. Yes, it is the underground. And you know that's that's actually some that's something that a lot of channels notice. Like there's just a lot of great channels out there, you know, similar to yours, whether it be the same content or not. But it's kind of weird how YouTube is. Yeah. Um, Man, a modular roof too? That's great. Wow. This stuff looks like fun. Okay, so let's get back to your image. Done fanboying for now. <laughs> so we've 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 gone through the philosophy of making things like our brain has to move from an area where it just sees a blur of content and our brain stops filtering out the macro detail and I have a headache because I've forced my thoughts and I forced my logic I forced my mind 
to focus intensely on all the macro detail. So when you come back to this, now it's like, okay, we've absorbed so much macro detail. What can we do inside here to make this feel more authentic? You know, and, and I think that your asset control list is good. I think that we have a really, really good start on this. I think that the next thing is to just move into greater detail. Yeah. So um, let's do this. Let's stop the video.